It's a killer. Fucking conversation. With just three cool guys talking about fried chicken. It's a killer. You guys, you guys laugh, but uh, let's just give a shout out at the top of the show to Happy Thirtieth uh, to Jordan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Honestly, hey yo, Happy Happy Thirtieth yeah. to Definitely. Craven's Krennic for Dude, sure. Thank you, first off, happy second off, thir- son of a bitch, right? <laughs> happy Thirtieth to you. Uh, happy Twenty Sixth to me back in July. Um, we missed that. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, and, man. Uh, yeah, um, and it, happy forty first <laughs> to to Nick. Hey, thank you. In a couple thank months, thank you, brother. Thank you. It was um, it was a sweet birthday, but it was honestly I did I did it, I <clears throat> the way that I fucked up my birthday trip a little bit by not getting my passport renewed soon enough, mm. and I didn't talk about the mm. trip that I wanted to go on, which was Thailand, Philippines, and Indonesia. In one, like, yeah, Damn. I was going to go, like, crazy with it. Yeah. So 30 sucks. <laughs> so that's what you're saying. <laughs> and and I, I fucking didn't talk about it enough. Didn't get to go to Indonesia? This fucking decade sucks. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So I. I, I had to go to. I had to go to Costa Rica. <laughs> so, yeah, I ended up, I ended up going. It's because I didn't talk about it enough throughout the year. And so I just, none of my people could go, like, you know, I was like, by the time I got my passport, my birthday was like a month, maybe five weeks away. And yeah, I, I mean, I didn't hear about it at all. What about you, Devin? <laughs> oh, yeah, you I didn't get, yeah, I didn't get an I invite. I wasn't going to ask you guys. I did definitely. Oh, everything you for, weren't going to ask us? No, I wasn't going to ask definitely you to, missed out to, to try to figure out three weeks of travel in four weeks. Like, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, dude, I was. I would have figured it out. Shut I would have been like, "Get me the fuck out of here!" I, yeah, exactly. You can't I got, even, Devin. Yeah. You're not even allowed to be out of the house between four a.m. and six a.m. So I, I don't hear that shit. Except, I, but it was all leading up to this trip. Yeah. That's what it was. I was like, "Hey, listen, like, I'll be there. I'll be there. You know, every second of every day for the first seven mm-hmm. months of the kid's life, and then I'm out. <laughs> that's the deal. I'm out." And, and Nora, um, Nora canceled canceled her uh, her bachelorette trip. I was planning on being gone for at least a month. <laughs> yeah. I, hate, I hate y'all. I actually just, I actually just sprang it on Emily the other day. I was like, "Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm going to Indonesia <laughs> and two other countries with Jordan." Um, I just dropped, I, I just dropped four, I just dropped 14k on the plane tickets because they, I waited last minute, and I don't even know how long I'm going to be gone for. Forgot to ask. <laughs> These are all one way tickets. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so that's I it. That you know, that's me living. Lo- that's me. Yep, Subway taking so, to the yeah, skies. Yeah, Subway. That, um, that's that's your that's your boy. That's your boy. S to the Subway, living big. <laughs> S to the Subway. <laughs> I end up going to Indonesia. I mean, I end up going to Costa Rica and Panama. It was sick. I um, one of my favorite parts was definitely being in an all inclusive. I just haven't been to an all inclusive in a while, and I fucking love all inclusives, dude. Like, I don't care how much they compromise on like the quality i don't give a fuck it's literally is <laughs> the fact that i can t- literally just tuck my wallet away and just do what i want it's like i don't give a fuck it was three yep if you if if you're the owner of a half inclusive out there you better watch <laughs> out when jordan steps into your lobby cuz you're probably going to get some looks <laughs> i uh yeah it was i had three nights at this really nice place had a really nice room and big bathroom and i had an ocean view it was great and it was like three hundred and one dollars. No shit. All inclusive. I probably God, saved. Damn. I probably wow. saved money being there. Yeah, it was crazy. The only the downside was I almost got hit by a car in each place, like really closely. Really? Seriously, I still mm. have the scratches on my wow. arm. Wow. What from the falling fuck? in the street? Yeah. <laughs> wow. It was crazy. The first one, I was in Costa Rica and I was crossing the street, and it would have helped if I wasn't so drunk. But <laughs> oh fuck, <laughs> that car was. I was looking at it. I watched it. I watched it, and it just didn't stop. Mm. And then I like jumped in the air and like sprawled a little bit, if you guys know what that means. And in, 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 like uh, a cat, actually. Yeah. And then I landed mm-hmm. in the street. Oh, I, I'm familiar with the scraped, word. <laughs> scraped my knees and both of my elbows. And then everybody looked and I got up and walked away. <laughs> okay. I, wow. I actually popped up pretty quick. I was, I was, it was nice. Um, but it was also terrifying. 
And then I got if I didn't like literally do like a little <laughs> like a little boot scoot like a little hip scoot in yeah. Panama I would have got hit by a car. No shit. Yeah, and I was just crossing the wow. street like like a very narrow small street, mm-hmm. and I know they saw me, but apparently well, they didn't, or they didn't give a fuck. But it was fun, dude. I had an absolute blast. I made some great memories. I did so much cool stuff. I went to a bunch of waterfalls. I mean, I, it was it, I, I mean Costa Rica is beautiful. Panama is fun. It's dangerous. But um, it helps if you buy one of those little – in Panama, you can buy a little SIM card. It's definitely dangerous if you st- if you start jumping out in front of cars. <laughs> that's for sure. No, everybody kept saying – every time I went anywhere, everybody was like, oh, yeah, you don't want to – just be careful. Every time. Mm. Guy, a guy guy helped me set mm. up my phone. And uh, at the end of the conversation, he was like, hey, be careful because, like, you have an iPhone. And uh, people will just run up and steal your phone and run away. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, mm. but it was really cool. Panama, I got a cellular plan. I saw that you were texting me off some fucking yeah, number. Yeah. It was six dollars and fifty cents, unlimited in- Wi-Fi, unlimited internet. Sorry, unlimited calls and texts. I was like, dude, how do I get this back home, baby? What is the deal? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that was cool. Anyway, I, I without going too long on it, it it was it it was a blast. It was my first international trip that I did solo. Actually, mi- really, my first solo wow. trip period that w- wasn't work related. Mm. And uh, it was an absolute blast. And I can tell you for a fact, it is more fun when you go with other people, but it is definitely, definitely more peaceful when you go alone. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. yes. oh that's that makes so much sense. more relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it. I I actually think everybody should do it once. Just, just, just travel you by see. yourself? Yeah. That's do right. something like go far. Don't be near anybody. Make sure you got your money and then you show up and just like make sure you're all stuff and you're, you're taken care of. But, dude, do a solo trip. Yep. It's don't tell me. any. Don't tell anybody where you're going. <laughs> don't learn the language. <laughs> carry a lot of cash. Uh, and yeah, make sure and, you, uh, you always uh, want to make sure you have your passport. Walk on around you. alone at night. Have your passport. Yep. yep. Walk a uh, walk around at night. Ask a lot of questions in English. <laughs> and um. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Well, I think we should start the show. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Cheese Gordita Bunch podcast, the official podcast of the Taco Bell Cult Facebook group. I'm your host, Nick Ortiz, and with me, my co-host, Subway. How's it going? Subway. It's eating fresh, baby. <laughs> All right. And then the four tablespoons of paprika and this 11 <laughs> herbs and spices, Jordan Cravens Krennic. The the splash of vodka in this uh, <laughs> fridge half and half. Uh, what's up, Thirty Jordy? Man, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm honestly, I'm just grateful these days. Hey, hey, you know what? When you when you <laughs> wake up when you're thirty, everything changes. I needed glasses. Yeah. You become more humble, and I love it. <laughs> become more humble. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. But you're always like a naturally a humble person. Thank but you. like you have managed to. Humble yourself even more. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do that? You know, you got to be the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Uh, got to be the best at humbling yourself. Uh, that's that's uh, a that's yeah. Well, uh, today we are going to be talking about the Colonel's secret <laughs> blend, or the original blend, as, as some way c- may call it. I'm so excited about this episode. So am I. Yeah. You know, doing research for this, uh, I realized that. There are so many copycat recipes. My wow. God. Wow. Those yeah. buffoons. Buffoons. Idiots. Yeah. Rubes. Rubes. S- somehow they still do it, and somehow they still do it wrong. They can't yeah. get it. They just can't. You'd, you'd think that at this point somebody would have accidentally replicated it, but no. uh, nope. it, 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 it's still a big big L for the, for the r- copycats Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. I, I mean – Honestly, the work that the the colonel put into it, and actually, we're we're gonna watch a quick video about about um about this recipe from the colonel's own mouth. And before we actually get into today's main topic, I do want to say follow us on social media, you know, Facebook, your Instagrams, your um, X's. We aren't on Threads yet. Uh, we will be on Threads oh, soon, I, I suspect. Yeah, we do. Um, do also, follow us on. Th- are, are we on TikTok? We are on TikTok. Oh, we're on yes, TikTok. Right? We are on TikTok. Okay. Follow us on TikTok. Um, as well, because we put, we also put out some juicy ass memes. Oh, the um, memes! The memes! If you see any mm-hmm. cheesy CGB memes, they are bussin', hella bussin'. Yeah, yeah, no cap. That um, a- that ass. So yeah, follow us uh, on social media, and of course, follow Tall Boys at Tall Boys on IG. Now, before we get into the the thick of it, let's talk about some news. <laughs> Live from the Cheesy Gordita Bunch newsroom in Austin, Texas, 
This is Talk Over the Town with your hosts, Jordan, Nick, and Devin. So, Subway is taken to the skies. In late August, Subway revealed that they are they have a blimp. It's called the Flying Footlong. Have y'all seen this shit? <laughs> this is yes, uh, I actually yes, uh, I, did. I did see um, something about it. I didn't I don't know the details though. Oh yeah, well, I mean, not very much detail to it. So, it is a sub-inspired aircraft that's about 180 foot long. Uh, it's 180 feet long blimp. No, no, you have to say 180 foot long. I It's it's it's, it's 100 it's, Yeah, it's that's the only way It's that, 180 yeah, foot yeah. long. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for correcting um, yourself. Uh, <laughs> foot long yeah. blimp. It's a foot long blimp. Yes. Yeah. 180 foot long blimp. Yeah, that's all one thing. A that foot is all long yeah. blimp. Yeah, foot, no, it's not. All right, just let, we'll get to it. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, it actually has a restaurant underneath that only six that that seats six guests. Well, uh, uh, Subway and, and five others, of course. Yes. Oh, of course. Su- Subway. Subway plus five. Yes. Um, and so this. You see that? You see that on the? Uh, you see that logo on the? Uh, um, on the blimp there. Uh, what does that say? <laughs> That's right. This is my name. <laughs> now this is actually starting September first. So we are in the. Uh, we are just at the beginning of this, and it's going. It could be flying over. It could be flying over us right now. God, could you imagine? Um, I, honestly, it may be just as cool as seeing the Wienermobile. I don't know about y'all, but like seeing the Wienermobile. <laughs> Is actually pretty fucking cool. I I actually think it's cool. Do they still drive it around? Yeah, yeah, do they still yeah. Do oh, oh yeah, oh That's yeah. That's cool. Cause I know if you saw it, you get some. If you saw Are it, we what? good? Are we good? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, hey. I can't hear. I, you. I definitely oh, there goes, think there goes, there goes, that seeing a subway, I I've actually seen the Wiener Mobile, <laughs> plenty of times actually. Uh, I I definitely brag? think that <laughs> was that, was like, <laughs> that was yeah th- yeah that was uh yeah a humble a humble flex as they mm-hmm. call it a humble flex that um but uh the um I I definitely think that the subway in the sky is a much more like stunning achievement <laughs> of mankind <laughs> yeah that doesn't sound biased at all um but I just like think about all of the weird phenomena that we've been seeing with all the UAPs the uh what is it unidentified aerial phenomena that the government's been reporting about and then all of a sudden we throw yeah. up a subway blimp I mean what kind of message are yeah. we sending to these fucking aliens <laughs> we're so right? prioritizing I, I also that think we of it as like our health <laughs> <laughs> no. I also I also can see like a reverse like Ocean Gate situation happening God. like the subway blimp the subway blimp goes too high <laughs> and <I'm> fucking Icarus <laughs> and there's six people that that yeah and, and, oh yeah, no it's being con- it's being controlled by a uh, by a Dreamcast <laughs> controller. <laughs> <laughs> a reverse, a reverse Ocean's Gate. Oh my oh god! Oh shit, that's a, a subway. So, Ooh, you're so fucking funny, dog. this uh, the flying footlong is hitting five cities. <laughs> uh, it's going to Kansas City, Atlanta, and uh, Orlando, <laughs> and Miami. That's only four cities. <laughs> did you miss one? No, or? no. I like that. I did not miss this one. I did not miss it. All right. Well, uh, four, four or five cities, guys. Uh, four or five cities. This is what the report says. <laughs> yes. Four out of the five cities. Four, four, no, four or five. Is what uh, four or five. Yeah. Four or five. Go. Yeah. Four or five. Unless it's going to like uh, wherever Subway lives um, in bumfuck Connecticut. <laughs> what's the city? What's the town? <laughs> from? Litchfield. And I can tell you that the blimp, the blimp is definitely not coming to Litchfield, Connecticut. Um, yeah, yeah, only I, I hitting the, <laughs> only hitting the, yeah, only hitting the big, the big towns, uh, like uh, Orlando like, and like, Miami. Like, that seems appropriate. Like New Lynchfield. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and, and big Lynchfield. <laughs> so it, it, it's only going to service six people, and it's forty people a day, and they're going a thousand feet into the air. I, I'm sorry. I'm not trusting this shit. First off, are we are we making the subs on the ground, or are we making the subs in the air? No, if you don't make it right then and there sure. in the air, it's, is it even worth the experience? What's the point? Right. Like, what are they going to pack a cooler full of fucking Pre-set subway sandwiches? sandwiches and just take you up there and give them to you? Yeah, they got to yeah. be made up um, there. Uh, I'm I'm with Jordan yeah. on that. Yeah, one. I, I do agree with you. What's what? What is the point? I, I tried to like see what the cost would be to like book this, but it's sold out. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's completely sold out. So, hey, 
the world may never may, may never know unless uh, a reverse Ocean Gates does happen, like <laughs> Subway has predicted. I I bet you none of those people are even named Subway. <laughs> I bet anybody who like anybody it, who it paid to go in that didn't have the didn't have the balls to ch- legally change mm. their name. So I don't even know if they deserve a seat. <laughs> Up there. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, if anything bad happens, we'll we'll touch back on this. Um, but uh, if also o- only if anything bad happens, though. So yeah, if I anything, mean, uh, unless, if anything good happens, we won't care. Just saying. Uh, unless we got some patriots out there who are going to be on that blimp. All right, if we got any patriots out there, any uh, Bell Nation patriots <laughs> taken to the skies, uh, then let us know because I would like to hear about this shit. I want. I'm I'm genuinely curious on what your experience is because Taco Bell did a hotel and fucking Subway's doing a blimp. All right. I like how they called it a restaurant, though. Like, these blimps, it's not a fucking restaurant. It's like a little cable car, dude. It's, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's one <laughs> table. There's yeah, no, one, yeah. no one's prepping food and washing dishes in the back, okay? Yeah, seriously, though. Like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Well, like I said, we'll come back to it if anything bad happens. Oh, but only thing, if anything bad. Of course, if, only, if, if anything <laughs> only bad happens. So the next thing we're talking about is the uh, Baja Blast Gelato. This is awesome. Did y'all fucking see that? My God, that looks yeah. so yeah. S- amazing, especially in Texas where it's been like 100 degrees for the last 45 days. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it looks fucking phenomenal. So it it's look- got the color is is definitely right. Oh, yeah. But, you know, if one thing that Mountain Dew yeah. does is they might get the flavor wrong, but they're not getting that color wrong. Well, uh, you're not wrong. Um, but so it, it, at the top of this, it says Baja Blast tastes like making out with a hot mermaid. That's a that's a great review. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a great that's a description. Star, that's five stars if I've ever heard it. I mean, that's how you die. All right? As someone who is uh, a D&D fan, mm. you never want to fucking entangle yourself with a mermaid. They're, those are actually sirens. They're going to mm. fucking kill you. They're going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. they're going to Like kill the ones you. in Harry Potter. Exactly. Those actually. are creepy. Yeah, exactly. Those were, they weren't, they I, I weren't w- fun. They weren't. They weren't hot either. True. I will say that they do a great job in the promotion of this product, making it look really fucking delicious. Like the t- like. I know it's all photoshopped and touched up, but like the texture uh, in the promo on this is like just absolute. It's like kind of slurping over the side a little bit. It looks like kind of like a creamy, frosty. I think it looks. I think it looks awesome. I think oh, it looks delicious. It I'm looks. Totally, it looks like it has uh, the. Like, I mean, it's a gelato, so I guess it's gonna have like the texture of like a sorbet. Yeah. But uh, I think it looks <laughs> really refreshing. It it, it comes in a um, three point six ounce container, and it's sold for two ninety nine, but only at two locations. Ah, fuck. Yeah, and uh, none and in Texas. Mm. Fuck no. They no, probably. They probably, no. probably. It's probably in like fucking Maine. No, it's in California. It's at where the it doesn't Ur- get hot. No. Excuse me, it's only at one campus. So it's at the Irvine campus uh, drive through location, and it's only there for two weeks, so while supplies last. That's going to be fun to try, though. Seriously, that would be cool because th- – go back up. Can you scroll back up? It's, it's a, it, look, it does look exceptional. I, I, there's no question about it. Um, and gelato is actually pretty good, dude. Yeah. Um, gelato is good. I mean – I think uh, this is a good way for them to test, like, ice cream without getting into, like, lactose. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, uh, appealing to more of a wide variety of people who – Want some who want something delicious, but also want something quote unquote like who that may be like healthy adjacent. You know what I mean? Because yeah, ice cream overtly just kind of sounds like it's like your dessert, but like gelato, this sounds like a nice little treat. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> like a nice little. Oh, I'll take that dry for some gelato. It's so funny. The Italians they're like, who cares, dude? <laughs> they're like <laughs> so tired of gelato. If you go to Italy, there's gelato fucking stores like everywhere. It's like, it's od, bro. But this is uh, – so this is uh, coming out August 31st, so it's already out. Uh, this is – was it it's week two into this? So it's probably already gone. TBH is while supplies last. Um, I, I'm going to look and see if there are any – if there are any um, – any like reviews out there, but uh, Liz Matthews with uh, uh, Taco Bell says this is the first time we're releasing a gelato, and we are so excited to hear how fans enjoy the sweet and creamy indulgence. Baja Blast is so is iconic to Taco Bell, and it has its own strong fandom. So introducing it in gelato form feels right. I mean, you're not wrong. Yep. And I think this is something that could probably hit the shelves and would sell so fucking well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I, I yeah. think the Baja yeah. Blast, I mean, Devin, I don't know if you're talking, but. It, I'm not. Oh. Uh. Yeah, I was just going to say if there's one trend 
that's bigger than gelato right now. I think we can all agree that it's Baja Blast. Fuck yeah. And, uh, yeah, like, that's Baja Blast is on the tip of everybody's tongue. Also, shout out to my boy Matt, uh, who hooked me up with a Baja Blast candle. What? Uh, over the weekend. Oh, man, I, I really genuinely yeah. am jealous that I can't smell it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it smells it smells like Baja Blast. Like ni- it smells like it ninety percent when you smell the the actual candle, mm-hmm. but when it's burning and it's just emitting the the essence, it's a hundred percent like nails the Baja Blast. Wow, uh, I, did, I thought you were gonna say and, they miss. I thought you were gonna say like when you no you no they, it, they, it doesn't hit, but you're saying it it nails it perfectly. That's so impressive. That is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Because so usually I think that uh, I think I think what I'm most excited about with this is that I there's nobody who's going to nail that flavor as well as Taco Bell. Like if somebody was like, oh, I made like a if some other company was like, oh, I made a, uh, a, a Baja Blast gelato, I wouldn't trust it. But I really feel like because it's Taco Bell branded, it's going to get the the flavor correct. Yeah, I think. I, I, yeah, I think you're you're definitely not wrong on that one. Uh, I mean, they have the time, they got the resources, they got the actual, you know what I mean, flavor ingredients uh, on what makes it smell like that. So, yeah, that makes complete sense. I mean, earlier this year uh, was in January, they released the Baja Blast uh, hot sauce, that uh, the Taco Bell That's hot the sauce. One. Oh, yeah. we can buy one. It's twenty five bucks. Oh, nice. Well, hey, if there any room on any room for me on my tab, you know what I mean, hit me up. Hey, hey, listen, if you are, if you want to support the show, <laughs> uh, we are taking <coughs> funds for Baja Blast candles okay? <laughs> uh, for so we can actually review them on the show. If anybody would like to sponsor that, this is a good opportunity. Hey, Hit us I'll, up. I'll fuck you. Yeah, I'll do a deep dive on that bitch. Hit us. Up. Hit us. I'll eat it. If you if you buy us them, um, you're 30. You don't do that anymore. <laughs> Somebody has to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair. You enough. guys are you That's guys my, are, uh, are breaking us. Ask for funds to get us Baja Blast candles. Perfect. Well, uh, if you've tried it, Bell Nation, please let us know. Uh, not the candle, but the gelato. I'm very interested in seeing what it would taste like. And before we get into our main topic, we just have one last thing to talk about. So um, this month, Taco Bell is releasing some really new items. So they are going to be releasing on September 7th. So yes, the, the, the fucking rolled chicken tacos. My man. Yep. God. With a choice of your dipping sauce. Items. Oh, these are these are top five for me, bro. Oh, dude, the one I'm excited for is the cheesy jalapeno Mexican pizza. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's going to be some new shit, dude. That's going to be some good shit, too, because if you don't remember in the past, we actually reported on Taco Bell. Um dabbling with some of the uh some of the uh what is it different flavors for mexican pizza we reported on a chipotle uh, not yeah, a chipotle a I remember that. yes yes yeah so i'm excited to see uh what comes out of this because i think if this goes well i think that we uh we have we stand a good opportunity to see different flavors for not just mexican pizzas but other you know like items i'm excited that I, I love the Mexican oh, yeah. pizza and some innovation there. It's great. Um, I'm not a big spicy guy, I think, as you know. Yes. Uh, but I'm a big Mexican pizza guy. And mm. uh, that that begs the um, that begs the interest and the willingness to participate here. But roll chicken tacos. I fucking seriously. It's I'm I, it was my one of my favorite things. Never had it. Oh, bro. The crunch yeah. is c- perfect. Is it? Yeah, it's great. So the rolled chicken tacos, that's just busting. And you get to dip it, and I like dipping. Well, I mean, I can't really complain about any, like, Taco Bell item. Um, Devin, ha- oh, Subway, have you tried that before? Yeah, I definitely did. Didn't we do an episode on the rolled chicken tacos? And I th- I thought they were pretty good. They're kind of just like taquitos. We uh, have not better. But, um, we have not done an episode. But I, but I was a fan. I'm a big fan. They are actually one of my favorite. They are top. Top five for me. I, r- I really actually love them. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I'm eating. It's fine. Do you want me? I can take over. All right, so listen up, motherfuckers. Welcome <laughs> to the show. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so September 28th, <coughs> nacho fries are coming back. You know what that means, Bell Nation? We got a fries with my guys episode coming Let's up. go, baby. Yeah. Let's go. And, and it means you can customize your items. 
in the way that you actually want. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can add nacho fries to your items <laughs> now, and it's gonna be it's it's gonna be delicious. I fucking I love nacho fries. Yeah. Soft potato taco, <clears throat> add nacho fries. That's my <laughs> that's my go to. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's my main right there. <laughs> Soft potato taco <laughs> with some extra nacho fries. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, so uh, Bell Nation, we are going to probably do a review on the rolled chicken tacos. I have not had a rolled chicken cho- taco. I do not know what episode Subway is talking about. I'm going nine and a half, ten already, baby, on rolled chicken tacos. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. Um, well, save it for save it for whenever we try them, bad boys, um, which I, I suspect will be pretty soon. But again, Bell Nation, um, thank you so much. And uh, follow us on Instagram and shit like that. Um, <laughs> and shit like that. Uh, you 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 know the you song know the and play. dance. Leave you us know a the fucking, fucking review. If you've listened to the show, more reviews, please. Thank you. Yes, yes, please leave us I'm, leave us some reviews. I'm awfully demanding today. Um, hey, you're thirty. I'm different. Yeah, you are different. Things yeah. are different for me. Yeah, I don't have time anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, mm. s- still managed to show up late. So today's episode. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Today's episode. Uh, like I had mentioned up at the top. We are um, talking about the 11 herbs and spices. We are talking about the Colonel's Secret Blend. Now, before we uh, actually talk about this, uh, I would like to just watch a quick video real quick. It's actually not a video because this happened in 1970, and I believe this was a radio interview with Colonel Sanders. Let's run, um, let's run oh, the tape. Okay. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're just going to watch uh, a quick video. And, uh, of course, if you, if you guys have any commentary, um, please, you know, let me know. But it's, this is the, the recipe in the colonel's own words. Yes, uh, just Years ago when I had my own restaurant, most proper item on the menu was fried chicken. Oh, wait, can you please pause it? The old <laughs> restaurant. Hold on, hold on. Last time I had a restaurant. That's oh, him? Yes, that is the uh, colonel. Devin, your voice has been a little off this that- whole time. <laughs> Oh, I, well, I'll tell you, I don't know if that is actually the real colonel. I feel like that might be an it's imposter. Not the colonel. But, uh, oh, okay. So here we go. Actually, take me out. Take me out saying Devin's shit's wrong and say and leave that. I'm part. not going to do that. Okay. Fuck me then, I guess. Then. Here it goes. Much better than the usual southern fried chicken that most folks were used to because I always did cook good chicken. Folks that came to my place to eat loved it, but I wasn't satisfied. Well, sir, one day I was cooking chicken for some folks going on a boat ride, and I decided to try a little change in my chicken recipe to see what they'd think. So instead of using just the 10 herbs and spices that I'd always use, I decided to add the 11th ingredient, don't you see? <gasps> well, the minute I tasted that chicken, I knew I'd made the best fried chicken <laughs> that had ever been cooked. That, that recipe like of 11 herbs and spices makes chicken so delicious that I haven't changed it to this very day. And now it's known all over the world as Colonel Sanders' original recipe of Kentucky Fried Chicken. My- wow. That's fascinating. So there was, so the, the Colonel's recipe started out as 10 herbs and spices, but then there was one that just put it over the edge. There was one secret spice. But it was the paprika. That drove it into stardom um and it was all because some people were out on a boat ride and he decided to surprise them with some chicken that's yeah, fucking he was fascinating just, that's why we do the show yeah, yeah he he was just like um yeah like let me add this extra spice i wonder what that extra spice was um to add that going, extra oomph. i'm going paprika yeah. <laughs> Ooh. You, you said i was full wolf now as we had mentioned <laughs> awful co- awful confident there jordan <laughs> He's like, oh, that's definitely paprika, 100%. <laughs> it's, the ol- it's the only one it could possibly be. <laughs> now, as we mentioned in our history on the Colonel Sanders, it took him years to perfect that blend. I mean, you heard it in the man's own words. He was trying left and right to come up with the recipe, and then he just added that extra little to it, and, you know, it, it really um, changed everything for the guy. Um but one thing I think is like really fucking awesome about the eleven herbs and spices is no one knows what the fuck those eleven herbs and spices are. <laughs> that we there is a finite amount of spice blends in the world, and when right. you think about Colonel Sanders, the access he had, he it's not like he was in India. You know what I mean? It's yeah, not it wasn't like he like was in. He a, was in- yeah. In, in Morocco or South America or somewhere or with like I mean, a fucking uh, or, tr- a trade market, you know what I mean? Yeah, He's in South Corbin. Africa or Panama or Panama. Ban- yeah. Panama. 
It, you know, it, it, this yeah. motherfucker we, is in Corbin, Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? We we got we have telescopes that can see out of this galaxy and see suns 45,000 light years away, but when it comes to what these fucking spices are, nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's just never been the, there's never been a, there's never been anybody to 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 to, to figure it out. Yeah, and not only has it been top secret, but it's also one of the greatest marketing tools KFC has ever. Actually, I would say any fast food restaurant yeah. has ever had yeah, because it, it's compelling. It it is compelling. It's a secret. Oh, yeah. And believe me, <laughs> KFC has gone to great lengths to maintain the secrecy behind the Colonel's blend. Uh, I mean, they've even gone so far as to um, have the original, like, handwritten recipe in a secured vault in a KFC headquarters in Louisville. <laughs> nice. Yes. That's I how fucking that. top secret this bitch is. And whenever they move it around, they hire armed guards. Armed guards wow. to fucking protect this piece of paper. <laughs> that is a wow. That is a gr- that's great. But it, it, it begs that's, the question. That's great. Is this all for optics? Is this is yes. this yes one hundred? Is this one hundred percent? Absolutely, it is. They're, they're, yeah, it, it's to sell yeah, more absolutely. chicken. That's why they do this. It, 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 they're gonna shell out a couple thousand because they know that they're gonna get a couple million on the optics of like. Man, that fucking spice blend must be some shit. Let's go get some KFC tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's great marketing. It's great marketing. It's uh, an awesome concept. It really plays up like the mystique and the sort of like folklore behind it. But there's no way that that shit isn't something that is already in most people's houses, <laughs> right? Like that. The the the, the recipe. It's so funny. Um, I mean, it's a it's a great idea, though. I love I love the mystique behind it. I love the. the oh, lore. yeah. And, and, you know, we may answer the question of what are these spices exactly. But um, what I would like to talk about. Is. How the colonel like really the like, key going back to when we talked about his history and how he didn't even trust the franchise owners to have his own recipe. Like he he would, you know, uh, make the blend himself. He would package it. He would give it to them. He uh, and then whenever he became like a big manufacturer, he would have two different companies create the spice blends and sell them separately to the to the franchise, you know, owners, which is insane. Um, so I, I feel like we, we've done a really great job of, of building the, the hype for this uh, for this spice blend. And as I had mentioned earlier, there are plenty of copycat recipes And today, what we are going to talk about is an article in the Chicago Tribune where the colonel's nephew um, actually showed a reporter another handwritten note uh, with the recipe on it. Okay. Yeah, so it's 2016. Uh, Joe Lettington, he's the the colonel's nephew on his wife's side, um, so he's not really related to the colonel you may see on TikTok, Anthony. Um, it's actually yeah his, uh, on Claudia's side. Uh, he actually worked in the gas station in Corbin, and he referred to his uncle as either Old Man Sanders or HD, which is from what I assume uh, stands for uh, Harlan David, which was the colonel's name, Harlan David Sanders. But uh, he agreed to work for the colonel, uh, like doing chores and shit, um, doing shit around the restaurant in exchange for using his swimming pool. That is that is an unfair mm. trade. Oh my god! Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Devin, I mean, Devin he, could probably. Speak. He's like, a, what? What kind of fucking uncle? That's it, your uncle? <laughs> oh yeah, oh nephew. Um, let me uh, let me uh, cut you a little bargain. You come work for me, you can take a dip in the Colonel's pool. <laughs> That's the deal. I love you, nephew. I love you, I love you so Dude, much. Dude, any person who uh, who's ever had a family member like their dad or their uncle or their grandpa like own a business. You are fucking working that shit for free. Yeah, that's that's facts. Like I can't. I the reason why I know how to like paint a house and like do basic like handyman work is because my dad forced me and my brothers <laughs> to do shit. And actually, he did pay us. He didn't like say, "Oh, we can go to like uh, the Mickey's and get something." No, he'd actually like give us a couple like like fifty or sixty bucks. But uh, yeah, he'd pay you in ca- He'd pay you in cash, not in dips <laughs> at his pool. <laughs> You're not wrong. You are not wrong. Uh, but, but Joe was also tasked with like mixing the flour and the spices, the spice concoction, 
He said, "Quote: I mix them over the top of the garage for years." Is that is that is that uh is that compliant there? Is Fuck that? no. <laughs> mix them. Over. Fuck. So after you uh after you get up there on the garage in the hot sun, you might uh, feel a little dehydrated, but don't worry, uh Uncle Colonel's got a nice cool <laughs> pool for you. <laughs> pop, to pop in when you're all done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you're so stupid. He makes him. He makes him work on the roof, <laughs> mi- mixing spices, which is the stupidest place to do that. <laughs> and then, in return for sitting on a hot roof in the middle of July, <laughs> mixing the fucking Colonel Secret Spice. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. There might be. There might be like a room above the garage or something. I that, think there's a room. The that's fact that you possible, assumed, but it's still the fact fucking that you funny. assumed the roof. <laughs> is hilarious, yeah. bro. I I understand where I understand where Subway's coming from, but that that, that was still that was funny, dude. <laughs> now, so if you may be feeling dehydrated. <laughs> now, Joe was doing the interview with the Chicago Tribune when he pulled out this old ass scrapbook, and this old nondescript scrapbook was overstuffed with pictures, newspaper clippings, and various family documents. Pictures of the Colonel fucking. Fucking crazy, dude. You should have seen the Colonel in 1960 dude. fucking <sighs> taking acid, dude. <laughs> but uh, he was thumbing through the pages and looking at these pictures and even like um, going over everything that the, that the family got whenever the Colonel passed. And they had come across a handwritten note on the back of a document. Now, I did read one account where it was like it was the back of Claudia Sanders' will. But honestly, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense um, because, one, who writes a handwritten note on the back of a fucking will? <laughs> uh, but also, uh, why would she need it at that time of her death? You know what I mean? Like, she, one, she wasn't making mm-hmm. anything, so why would she need the handwritten note? It just didn't make sense to me. Now, like, this, this sounds just like more more lore, right? More more story building, yeah. more yeah. marketing, which is – I can respect a little bit. I mean, you're lying, but – <laughs> I, can, I can appreciate like the story building and in, in, in the funness behind like you know people's imagination and shit and, and it's a good being story t- to say like oh on the back of her will was actually the original handwritten recipe but it like, is a good story and I can that's why like that's kind of fun mm-hmm. right like if I'm if I'm if I like KFC, I'm but like, you're oh 30 my gosh. now, and we don't believe in fairy tales. Yeah, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, on the back of uh, on the back of this document in blue ink, it reads eleven spices mixed with two cups of flour. He fucking blew it. <laughs> he fucking blew it. All he had to do <laughs> was write that shit somewhere else. But for whatever reason, like the, maybe the closest piece of paper was his wife's will. Like obviously somebody's gonna find that. Well, so. so that's the thing. So the the, the reporter asks <sighs> if this is the actual recipe, and Joe says yes. Later, uh, later, like a couple months after this, he would actually recount this story, uh, recanted, excuse me, like saying that it wasn't it wasn't the actual recipe. But I think that's, you know, big chicken, you know, really staring big, down. Big chicken. That's big, the first time you've used that. Big <laughs> chicken staring down at him. Big, you know yeah. what I mean? Big chicken. Like, hey, you're yeah. not going to be coming to any family big, reunion uh, soon. I feel like, <laughs> like yeah, funny. big chicken, big chicken might be scarier than Big Bell, I think. I think I'd, I think I'd rather deal with the dark and underbelly of, of Big Bell than Big I Chicken. Actually, I actually think so. I naturally knee-jerk reaction and gut reaction agree with you. <laughs> so uh yeah he says that it's a real that's the actual recipe now during this interview he is quick to point out that the uh the handwriting isn't the colonel's handwriting but he does say Ooh. that is the actual fucking recipe now over the years there have been well it just got a lot more sus right that they don't think that was his handwriting i mean come well he, on. he's saying that, that it isn't like, his handwriting He's saying, like, flat out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, Joe, like, you obviously wrote that, bro. And you were pissed off. You held a grudge because your uncle, you worked your tail <laughs> to the bone and your uncle never paid you. He sometimes gave you, he sometimes gave you a little pity swim <laughs> in his pool. And other than that, you got nothing. From, you got nothing from the empire. So... I do, I bro, I do the same thing. I would do the same thing on my grandma's. Oh will. my god! Don't worry. Now, over the years, there have been hundreds <laughs> of copycat recipes. Uh, there was actually one copycat recipe coming from a couple who had bought the Colonel's old house. It was like I guess a house that he had lived in the seventies, and apparently they had found a piece of paper tucked inside a nineteen sixty four date book, 
And Yum Brand responded by suing them. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah. That yeah. seems... See, That's hella fucked up, no. <laughs> Dude, see, that seems like more of a fake than than anything. Like, oh, you happen to find a recipe oh, yeah, of in course. a 1964 date book? He wasn't even... Get the even, fuck out of here. I mean, wait, what year did he die again? 1980. Okay, then that might have been... the could have possibly been the real one, but... but uh, now I think I I think we know who's scarier than the big chicken. It's Yum Brand. Holy, <laughs> <laughs> holy shit, guys! Holy shit! I just I'm I'm going through my drawer right now, <laughs> and I found a piece of paper, <laughs> and it's got. Oh my god! I I think this is I think this is Colonel Sanders. <laughs> 12, a, 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 actually, there's twelve spices here. Twelve spices. There's twelve here. Oh my god! <laughs> Subway hit it big. Okay. Uh-huh. You just hear the FBI banging on his door. Boom, 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 boom. The first, uh, <laughs> the, the, the first ingredient is that sweet onion sauce. <laughs> sweet onion mm-hmm. teriyaki. Mm-hmm. teriyaki. <laughs> what you're gonna need first? <laughs> it's the base. It's the base of this. <laughs> it's what gives it its iconic flavor. <laughs> The original flavor comes from sweet onion teriyaki. <laughs> but, you know, the case was <laughs> dropped um, <laughs> after they. Funny. So what they what Young Brand did, I guess, is they examined it, uh, examined it and they had term, they determined that it wasn't even close to the original recipe. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. Because, you know, mm-hmm. actually, I'll, I'm going to talk about it a little longer, uh, a little while longer. So I know what you're wondering. What is that recipe? So before we get into it. There was a claim that the colonel actually stole this recipe. Uh, now, this claim is that uh, he stole it from a black woman named Miss Childress. Okay, I remember that. <clears throat> yeah, yep. and so there's an African diaspora Facebook page called uh, – I guess I don't know what the fuck it's called. But it's an, as- an African <laughs> diaspora Facebook page, and it said, quote, Colonel Sanders stole his famous original recipe – from a black woman named Miss Childress. He paid her $1,200 for her recipe. Now, the claim is largely unproven. Uh, th- what they did is they, like, showed a picture of, like, a mammy figure, uh, like, cutting, like, chicken. And they said that this was, like, her. Um, the family has come out against it saying, like, no, like, this isn't something. He's just, like, an old man from the South who knows how to fucking cook. So he was able, you know what I mean, to like kind of whip up his own recipe. Um, yeah. And I, I don't I don't know. I, I could see like whenever we talked about in the first episode, our first episode of season two, History of Fried Chicken. Yeah. And how we talked about how, um, you know, a lot of these recipes came from enslaved folks. Yeah. Like, obviously, like he probably had taken this from someone who learned it from an enslaved person. But to say that, like, he stole like the 11 herbs and spices, like quite like right out. It does mm. just doesn't seem like you know makes sense. I mean, yeah, I don't have a lot to add. I just I agree. Um, I think I think it's so easy to to do this. It's it's so, it's so easy to do this when somebody's dead. Yeah, it's so it's yeah. so easy to do this when somebody cannot defend themselves. I mean, see, I there I, I feel like this is kind of like, have y'all heard like the the shit about Elvis? How like oh Elvis like. He's a good artist, but all he did was do what black people did, and because he was white, he was able to be in the mainstream. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, I, I feel like I yeah. feel like this is the reason why I would say that this is it feels different is because it, it's like with food, whereas like white artists were directly uh, doing like tutti frutti, originally done by Little Richard, and just like sanitizing it. Whereas like Colonel Sanders is just a, again an old fucking man from the South yeah. who knows how to whip up some fucking chicken. Yeah, I feel that. I do feel that. Um, I, I I definitely agree more with your first take that I'm sure there was like influence that was coming from that style of, of cooking. But it's really, really hard to pr- like without any sort of evidence. It's really, really hard to make a broad claim like that, that it was stolen from a specific person. If all you have is a picture from an ad, that is it like that. That's a difficult that's a difficult thing to yeah. to to claim, at least legally. Now, and also, I mean, we're gonna get into these fucking spices right now. So I'm gonna just lay, name off these spices, and you're gonna see that these are very common spices. <laughs> and these are the ones that this is the recipe 
that was released by the Colonel's nephew. Yes, this was this was uh, done by uh, Joe Lettington. This is like directly translated from the handwritten note. And actually, if I can just pull up a picture of the handwritten note if y'all want to uh, see it. They got pictures uh, of it. And, and pay attention to the to these because if you were thinking about uh, doing a smash and grab on the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> KFC armored vehicle that uh, moves this thing around. Um, you 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 don't need to do that anymore because we're going to tell them to you live yeah. right here on the program. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, so first one, uh, two thirds tablespoon of salt. Boom! <laughs> Saw that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a half tablespoon of thyme. A half tablespoon okay. of basil. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> one third I tablespoon of it. oregano. One tablespoon of celery salt. Could I get, yeah, that's a big move. That's a big yeah, one yeah, right there. Bold. I fucking love celery, yeah, celery um, salt. Yep. One tablespoon of black pepper. Naturally, yes. Yeah, the white pepper mm-hmm. doesn't do it. Mm. Yeah, one yeah. tablespoon. <laughs> <laughs> one tablespoon of dried mustard. Gross, but all right. Okay. Four tablespoons of paprika. That's me. <laughs> oh. Two tablespoons of garlic salt. Love garlic salt, right? One yeah. tablespoon of ground ginger and three tablespoons of white pepper. Fuck. Oh, boom. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I've never, he- I've white never pepper, heard Jordan of white was... pepper. I was just kidding a second ago. <laughs> I've literally not, I didn't even know that existed. Hey, here at the Cheesy Gordita Bunch, we love all pepper. <laughs> we love hey, he, he, white all, pepper. Hey, 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 hey all, white pepper. All pepper. White pepper stole everything that he does from black pepper. <laughs> just saying now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Now the folks down, <laughs> the, the folks down at the Chicago Tribune, they they actually made this recipe. They had like a little test kitchen down there, and they said it tasted like kind of like it. Uh, about you know to use your your uh, what you had mentioned earlier, Subway. It tastes about ninety percent there, and then they added yeah. one tablespoon of MSG. And they said it was on the motherfucking <laughs> money, dude. It tastes, That's it. it tastes just like it. That's so funny. Yeah, so there may be, t- if That's not better, there, apparently. Appa- yeah, Almost. actually, if not better, for sure. Uh, apparently, uh, there is 12 spices. So, Devin, maybe you did find the real the real kernels. Um, hey, hey, uh, lock awesome. that down, Devin. They're going to. They're, They're gonna, gonna sue you. <laughs> I was like, uh, just like I'm just like Indiana Jones open, opening the chest. <laughs> there it is. That's it. It's. MSG. <laughs> it was MSG all along. Yeah. Well, um, when whenever they asked about the authenticity of these like secret recipes, it always seems like KFC's spokesman is always like, "Yeah, that's not exactly it. That's not exactly <laughs> the recipe." That makes sense. Yeah. I would I would do that too if I was KFC. Right. I would do that too. That's that's well played, KFC. That's that's why I wanted to mention at the top is like. Uh, any of these recipes that, that are copycat recipes could be it. Could be the exact 11 herbs and spices, but there is so much more that the colonel does to the chicken to make it taste like KFC, you know? Mm. He, he in yeah. the video that we, we had watched, um, it actually goes further on into it. And yeah, he talks he, about... Before he killed the chicken, he jerked it off. And, <laughs> and, and, he and was that really happy. The... He choked that chicken. Yeah. <laughs> But he would actually inspect these chickens <laughs> at the KFC store. He would season the flour. You know, like there was so much more that the colonel did. So these 11 herbs and spices may be that. But did they have the colonel's know-how? Did they have the colonel's experience? Did they have the, cur- the colonel's like failures behind them? Absolutely not. That's why I think that, sure, they may like come up with these recipes that kind of taste like Colonel Sanders. But I bet nothing tasted better than actual fucking Kentucky Fried Chicken from the fucking man himself. That's it. I'm done. This yeah. episode. This, that's it. No, that's this episode it. is over. Just rewind Nick's monologue and and listen to it again. That's it. Yeah, that that that's was cool. really eloquently said, and I agree with every facet of that uh, of that analysis. That you know, and I think this is true with all food, oh, yeah. that's right? True. With all like like with all great culinary geniuses there's always like it's there's there's something that sort of transcends any physical ingredient oh yeah and, and, it's, and it's that is love. what <laughs> and you love. know the thing is is y'all know me i'm a, i'm a curmudgeon uh i try not to be but i am and 
Um, I did not want to like the Colonel. You know, <laughs> I wanted to find something in the Colonel that I I did not like. Like not with Glenn lie. Bell, the fact that like he like stole like some shit from Mexicans, it, it does eat at me a little bit. But with like Colonel mm-hmm. Sanders, I I don't know. Like the dude seems so endearing. Uh, he seems like he was like really passionate and connected to his work. It. It also seemed like you know, this may just be the allure of the colonel, but like that he really cared about his product and serving yeah. people more than he cared about you know the money of it. And and I I don't know I, yeah. I, I like that a lot more than someone who's just trying to do a cash and grab. You're, I, you're well for one you're 100 percent right. I fully agree with you on the, like me seeing the colonel that way too. And uh, I just think you're right, man. I think you're right. I think the the, the cur- <laughs> it's funny that you say you like you're looking for something to hate. I get that. I'm a bona fide hater, bro. Yeah, I mean that's, that's fair. Have but you I ever actually seen do like I I fucks with the colonel. I fucks with the colonel. I fucks with the colonel. <laughs> Dude, ha- have you ever been? Legend. Have you ever considered going on a pilgrimage to the? Uh, have you seen his mausoleum, Colonel Sanders' grave? Only in pictures. In Only Louisville. In pictures. <laughs> well, once I um, it, have my colonel status, uh, I think um, I'll go. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean I know we're joking about that, but legit. We should apply to be colonels. No, we're gonna do it. I actually am surprised we haven't. It's not already official. We need to do it. Okay, we need yeah. to do it. That's that's it. You heard it here first, Bell Nation. Um, we are gonna apply to be colonels. Let's do it, baby. That's right. But um, yeah, you know what? If you try this recipe, please let us know. Let us know what you think. And I will say, go online. They have the um, they have the different pressure cookers. They have the you know, the oil, the flour. There are people out there who really dug into this recipe um, to figure out, you know, what w- if they could replicate the kernel. And if you do so, um, you Bell Nation Patriots, let us fucking know. And actually, send me a bucket. Send me a barrel. <laughs> send me a bucket. Send me a send bucket. Send me a, pow- a party it. barrel. But uh, Bell Nation, of course, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. I'm your host, Nick Ortiz. You know how to follow me on Instagram, on face. Well, no, on Instagram at Cheesy Gordita Nick, and of course follow Cheesy Gordita Punch. All right, holla at your boy. I know, I noticed you that. Noticed That's cool. That? Yeah, you got a your boy shirt. Yeah, it's on my uh, signature yeah. there, basically uh-huh. on my shirt there. But yeah, holla <laughs> at your boy. Um, it's all love. Thanks for having you. Thanks for thanks for th- thanks for letting us uh, you know fill your eardrums for another week. Mm-hmm. You know another. Bi weekly. Mm, so yeah. well said. Boy, so well said. <laughs> Nick's got his monologue. You've got that <laughs> little ditty to play, us out, to play us out with. That's uh, all. I got. Yeah, what's up? This What's up? This is your Pope, <laughs> Colonel S to the Obway. Another one in the bag. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, follow the tall boys. Follow me. Uh, but not to my car. Late at night, I get scared and I might pepper spray you. <laughs> white, white pepper spray. <laughs> white pepper spray, of course. <laughs> All right. Uh, stay Baja blessed. Holla. This show is made possible thanks to listeners like you. For more great Cheesy Gordita Network content, follow us on social media or go to CheesyGorditaNetwork.com to stay up to date. Thank you for your support and stay Baja blessed. <laughs>